Let's confess the word of God. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over the whole earth in Jesus' name. And the knowledge of the Lord fills the earth. God is my Father, and He loves me with an everlasting love, with an unconditional love, and my sins and iniquities He remembers no more. Do you remember when um, Jesus asked Peter, he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter, but my father, which is in heaven. And upon this rock of revealed knowledge, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Not against Peter, but upon the knowledge that the Father reveals of who he is. So I pray right now, Father, in Jesus' name, that every person that is listening to these videos, Father, that their eyes are opened to see your love, to see who you really are, and how much you love us, and your heart, and the true love of the Father in Jesus' name, and that you write this revelation on the tablets of our mind and our heart, according as you have sworn and as you have promised in Jesus' name, Father. Thank you so much, Father. We just bless you for it. So we've found one of the the, um, places where Jesus revealed the Father to us, was uh, the father that had two sons. But we're going to look at another place, and this was actually the first place that the Lord took me when um, the Lord spoke to Frank to learn to live by faith and then to teach my people how to live by faith. And so he took me to this, and I just began meditating on it and looking at it as the father talking directly to me. And that's the way you need to do the word, is let the Father reveal himself to you by his spirit and by the word. So listen to this in Matthew chapter six. And this has become one of my favorites because of the revelation of the Father that's in there. So Jesus said, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink or for your body, what you shall put on. And then he says this, is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? So I meditated on that to get the understanding of what he was saying. So what he was saying is that I gave you life and food is not near as valuable as life is. If I could give you life, I can certainly give you food. And he said, um, and is not, let's see, and the body more than raiment. So he said, I gave you a body. And if I could give you a body, then I can certainly clothe the body I gave you. Isn't that awesome? Then listen to what he said. Behold or look at. So when he says, behold, we behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? So let's just meditate on that. He says, look at the birds of the air, and let's don't put anything in there. Let's just look at it the way he said it. Look at the fowl, the birds of the air. They don't sow, they don't reap, They don't gather into barns. So what is he saying? They don't do anything for their food. And then he says, your father feeds them. Have you ever thought about that? I hadn't, not until I got the revelation of this, that our heavenly father feeds the birds every day, all day, whatever time, and he feeds them all the thing that they enjoy all over the earth. That's what God said. That's what he told us. He said he feeds the birds every day 
Well, he created them. He feeds them. And so he wanted us to see that, that they don't do anything for their food. And he says, so he says, yet your heavenly father, your heavenly father, notice how he makes it a point to say, your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? He's telling you that you are much better than the birds that he feeds every day. So in other words, if he's going to feed the birds, then he's certainly going to feed you. And of course, in Isaiah 1, 14, he tells you that you will eat or he will feed you with the best of the land. And he also said in another place, don't you know, I would have fed you with the finest of wheat. So I remember one time when we were just first learning this and our cupboards were bare. And I think we might have had a few potatoes, but um, Frank came in and he said, so what's for dinner? And I just looked at him and I said, it's not my thought, it's not my care. And I just went out and played either baseball or softball with one of the children. And I was just acting on this word. And a, a kid came up on a motorcycle and stuffed $5 in Frank's hand. You would think, well, $5 won't get you anything. Back then it did. He And he tried to not take it. He said, I don't want your money. And he said, no, preacher. He said, you worked on my motorcycle. I want you to have it. And he wouldn't let him not give it. I mean, Frank tried to give it back because he, he would work on the kids, neighborhood kids' motorcycles and, you know, just be a blessing to them. And he didn't want any of their money. But he stuffed it in his hand. And so Frank went to the store and he got, back then you could buy a whole chicken for like $3. And I'm not sure what else he got, but we had a feast that night. Your heavenly father wants to feed you with the best of the land. And I'm sure I shared this not too long ago, but so what I started doing is, is deciding based on Mark eleven twenty four what things soever you desire. What did I desire for the next day's meal? So I wrote down what I desired for breakfast, for the children's lunches, for dinner, and then probably for the next day's breakfast as well. And I made a list of it, and the next morning, I believed for it, and God sent the money, and I went to the store and bought it and learned how to believe God day by day. Hey, saints, God wants to bless you. So I started also, I learned that God calls things that be not as though they were. So I looked at my cabinets and I said, you are full and running over with the best of the land. And I just said that and said that. And do you know, one day I opened the one of the cabinet doors and something fell out on my foot and I heard myself say, my cabinets are full and running over with the best of the land. And they have been ever since. I have three refrigerators and they are all full and running over with the best of the land. So start saying that, you know, just declare what the word says about you. But looking at the heart of the father, he wants to feed you. He wants to feed you with the best. He doesn't want you to budget your meals. He doesn't want you to budget going out. Believe God, just go to him and say, Father, I just want to thank you that you love me so much that you feed me with the best of the land in Jesus' name. And then he said, um, and which of you by taking thought can accomplish anything? And then, and I shared this with you a couple of days ago where he said, uh, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil. In other words, they don't work for their clothes. They don't spend, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his wealth and splendor was not arrayed like one of these. Well, I looked that up. I cross-referenced it, and the word said that when the queen of Sheba went to Solomon, and listen, Jesus is the one that brought this, referenced this, so that tells you 
that the wealth that Solomon had, God gave to him. Hey, saints, if God will do it for Solomon, he will do it for us. But when the queen of Sheba went to Solomon's palace, she, it said that even the apparel of the servants and the manner in which they entered and, and left, that her heart fainted within her. Even the apparel of the servants. So God is saying to us, he's telling us that the lilies of the field were clothed with more than Solomon in all of his wealth and splendor. And how much more would he clothe you? If he would clothe, take a blade of grass and clothe it with a beautiful lily in this time of year, which is in the spring right now as I'm doing the video, uh, and the flowers are coming up, and I look at that, and I say, oh, my father took a blade of grass just to put clothe it with a beautiful flower. Now, I would have never thought uh, that he called it clothing, but if he called it clothing, that's the way it is because everything is the way he sees it and the way he says it. So he clothed a blade of grass with a beautiful lily, which today is and tomorrow is gone. How much more would he clothe you O oh, ye of little faith. So he's telling us to believe him for those things. So then he next he says, So um, take no thought what you shall eat or what you shall drink or wherewithal you shall be clothed. For after all these things do the heathen seek after. In other words, they don't, he says, but your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. Now I want you to just think about that. You personally your heavenly father loves you so much that he knows what you have need of. He is that personal of a father to you. He knows what you have need of. And so he says, so take no thought for these things and take no thought saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? Or how are we going to pay for a house? Or how are we going to pay the electric bill? Or how are we going to do this or that? No, he says, take no thought. Your heavenly father knows what things you have need of. But he says, seek first, inquire, require of the kingdom first. That's what he means. He doesn't mean work for the kingdom. That's not what he's saying. He said to seek after. The word seek in the Greek is to inquire of or to require of. And I'll prove this out uh, in the next few verses. So require or inquire of the kingdom first. And then all these things will be added unto you. And at, when I was first meditating on this, and oh, it was such revelation in my heart. I, it was just so real. And... One day he said, do you know why I said to go to the kingdom first? And I said, why? He said, because when you come to me first, you don't have to go to man. When you come to me first for healing, you don't have to go to man for healing. When you come to me first for your money, your clothing, your housing, then you don't have to go to man to borrow for it. So when you go to him first for anything, because he gives it to you, then it says all these things will be added unto you. Then he says, take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. And going back to that first time when I believed him for certain things for the meal, then the next day when I went to the store after the Lord provided the money, the, the thought was, oh, you need to get some hamburger helper and spread this out. And immediately the Holy Spirit gave me the scripture, take no thought for tomorrow. I will be there tomorrow. And I learned to live at that time day by day. And so then I thought, you know, I think I'll start believing for this a week at a time and then a month at a time and so forth. But so I bought just what I had believed for then the next day I believed and bought what I believed for for that day and so on 
until, like I said, I started believing for a week at the time. So he's saying, and that's the revelation of it. Don't take any thought for tomorrow. And he taught the children of Israel. Um, oh, I'll have to close on this. We'll pick up on this tomorrow. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. God is your father and he is your provider. He loves you.